for our video recording purposes of the demonstration we will be working with our hoods raised all the way just so that the reflection of the glass doesn't interfere with our recording so please note that this is not the correct way to be working in the hood but we have the hood sashes raised only so that the glass reflection does not interfere with our recording today we are doing the experiment on melting points there are two parts to this experiment first part will be to examine the effect of mixing another compound with a given compound and study what happens to the melting point of this individual compound and the second part of the experiment would be to determine the identification of an unknown compound by the mixed melting point method that we studied in the earlier part. So, let us go to the first part of the experiment. In the first part of the experiment, you are given two standard compounds, standard A and compound B. These two compounds have very similar melting points. So, what we will do is we will determine the melting point of A alone, then B alone and the mixture of the A, of compounds A and B together and determine the melting point of this mixture and we will see what happens to the melting point of this mixture. Along with these three, we will also take the melting point of the unknown compound for our trial purposes in this first part of the experiment. To do this part of the experiment, what I would like you to do is take a piece of paper, label it as A, B, A plus B and unknown. And you also may notice that I have made some slots in this paper. I use the spatula to make these holes in the paper. Now, let us see how to prepare the sample for determining the melting point. I'm going to take some solid A, use the spatula that is attached to this jar. Take a little bit of the sample on a weighing paper. Fold the weighing paper over the sample. Use a spatula to press and grind the sample into a fine powder. Unfold the paper, just move the powder around to make sure that it is indeed fine and now we are ready to take this sample in a capillary tube. What is a capillary tube? A capillary tube is a thin glass tube, it has one end sealed and one end open. This is the capillary tube that we use for determining the melting point. So, I am going to fill this capillary tube with the sample. So, just pick up some sample from the open end of the capillary tube, tap it, then pick some more of the sample. Tap it again, continue to do so till you have enough sample in the capillary tube. Now how much is enough? We want to have a decent amount in the capillary tube so that we are able to observe the melting 
of the solid in the Hoover apparatus. If you notice, I have about 3 to 4 millimeters of the solid sample in this capillary tube. Okay. After filling the powder into the capillary tube, we want to ensure that this solid sample is filled in in a compact fashion. To do that, what I would like you to do is take a plastic tube, hold it on the tabletop, drop your capillary through it. It will not break, it will just jump around but it will ensure that the solid is packed in in a compact fashion. So repeat this a couple of times, maybe three times, making sure that the solid is indeed packed compactly in this capillary tube. So this was my sample A. Now where do I put this capillary tube that contains sample A? I am going to attach it to the hole on this paper labeled A.